All right, small businesses make up 70% of America's job force. Yesterday, we told you about the climate change bill, you know, cap and trade, and how much it'll hurt small businessmen. Now, we're looking at health care reform. How much will Obamacare cost them? Here's Ryan Ellis, Tax Policy Director for Americans for Tax Reform, and Rich Reinwald, owner of Reinwald's Bakery in Huntington, Long Island. He's also the president of the Retail Bakers of America. Ryan, let me start with you. Set the stage. Before I do that, we had some, uh, some news that came out right before we came on air. Uh, and it basically was, a, a, I, I believe it came from Charlie Rangel. They're looking to charge an additional surtax to any individuals making over $350,000 a year, a higher surcharge for people making over $500,000 a year, and yet another surcharge of people making over a million dollars a year. It seems like they figured out how they're going to try and pay for this, and it's going to be taxing and taxing and more taxing. Yeah, not only taxing. Uh, you have to remember that small businesses uh, pay their taxes on their owner's 1040 forms. So when small businesses are paying taxes, they're paying taxes at these higher marginal tax rates. Uh, they're paying these surtaxes will be paid largely by small businesses. Something like two-thirds of small business profits are going to pay taxes at these tax rates. And they're some of the highest tax rates that small businesses have ever had to pay. Right. The number that they say this is going to generate is about $540 billion over 10 years. So it comes out to $50, $54 billion a year. We're talking a big number to pay for this tax, for the, to pay for this health care reform. We're talking... It could be $300, $400 billion a year. I know everyone says maybe it's 100 but when are they ever right? What's the real number? What's this really going to cost us to have major overhaul of health care? Well, if you look at some of the independent studies of what the scores have been on these health care proposals, the number that keeps popping up is between 3 and $4 trillion over 10 years. So I think your $300 billion a year number is pretty accurate. Uh, you're going to have to raise three to $400 billion a year uh, just to meet this. Obviously, programs like Medicare and Medicaid in the past have ballooned out of control several decades after they were put in place. Uh, so, but to start with, I think three to four hundred billion is pretty accurate. Um, one of the things that really surprised me over the last couple of weeks was Walmart came out and said, "Hey, you know what, Obama? We're signing on. We're in bed with you on this." And, and I just, for the life of me, you know, they've been anti-union. They've been anti, you know, major overhaul in health care. What's the incentive for Walmart to sign on to this package? Well, I mean, you know, sort of broadening it a little bit from Walmart to, to larger businesses. Larger corporations have uh, been seemingly willing to sign on to these uh, government-run medicine schemes. And a lot of it is because of what you started off the segment here with. Uh, who's being asked to pay for this? Is the corporate income tax rate going up to pay for this? No. Uh, these are surtaxes, increases in the top marginal tax rate, largely that will be paid by small businesses. Right, hang in there. So hang in many cases... Ryan, hang in there. I, I happen to have a small business owner right here. Uh, yesterday we talked about cap and trade, and, and we, we actually showed you someone who felt that the cap and trade, the higher energy costs, was squeezing him out of business. Talk to me, sir, uh, about health care costs going up, what it's, what it's doing to, to you. Well, first of all, I want to congratulate Congress on their foresight. Not only did they prepare the cap and trade to create a pile of cash that they can uh, gorge themselves on, they're already looking forward to going to the trough of small business to continue the feeding. And I think that, uh, again, uh, between uh, removing the tax exemption uh, or the tax deduction on the uh, tax benef uh, health benefit that we pay, uh, that's going to drive our uh, I'm not going to pay that kind of bill anymore when it's cheaper at the government level. So uh, my employees are going to go to the government. Yeah, but you, you also talk about uh, something that really bothers you. When, when politicians are running for office, when they want, they, they want the vote, they come out and force the small business owner like yourself and, and look for that photo op. And then when they get there, it, it kind of hurts you. Absolutely. You know, the bakeries, uh, which I represent, uh, have always been the focal point of the community. And so the local representatives always come out there and, and, and campaign. And then uh, it seems like they forget all about us, uh, forget all about small business the day after they're elected. All right, then we're going to have to leave it there. Ryan Ellis, Tax Policy Director uh, for the, uh, the Americans for Tax Reform, and Rich Reinwald of Reinwald Bakery. Thanks a lot, guys. All right, did the media have an anti-Sarah Palin bias during the election? One of the